Almost got it. Almost. Almost. Come on. Oh! Oh! Oh, son of a... I okay? Yeah, Biggie, I'm, I'm fine. Just finish your coloring book and I'll take you for a walk later, all right? It's the boss. Yes, sir. Have you finished the job? Yes, sir. I just put the finishing touches on now. Excellent. Well, sir, I want to let you know, I know you told me not to worry about, you know, doing more than what you expected, but I'm honestly on a roll here, and I would love it if you would just let me do more for you. I mean, come on, there's so much more I can do than just simply hook up a computer, you know what I mean? Really, it's okay. You don't have to go above and beyond. Oh, I insist. It's okay. Well, suit yourself, I guess. Oh, uh, okay. Bye. Man, I can't, I can't wait, wait until he sees all this, all this extra, extra effort. effort. Surely, Surely he'll, he'll give, give me an awesome, awesome promotion. promotion. <gasps> or, or maybe, maybe he'll, he'll even give me a raise. raise. I, gotta I gotta work, work fast. fast. Three days later. All right, folks, after a little bit of a waiting period, Nate finally sent me something for all my hard work. You know, I kind of figured a promotion would be a little bit outlandish, but, you know, at the very least, let's get some money in. You sent me a card, and usually with cards comes money. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see just how much Nate gave me. You're the greatest. Aw, thanks, man. <laughs> what the hell? Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Honest Opinion. I want to give a big apology for that lengthy intro. I did not expect it to be that long. But anyway, tonight we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Sunshine, and I decided to call in some help with this one. And I can't think of anybody better than the master of all things Mario, Nathaniel Bandy. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Hey, I make really dumb Nintendo videos that people like for some reason. It's an honor and a privilege to have you here, dude. But why don't we go ahead and just get down to business. Is this game any good? And is it something we could recommend to you? Let's find out. Alright Nate, what can you tell me about this game? Mario Sunshine is a 3D platforming adventure game released worldwide back in 2002. Japan saw the release first in July, with everyone else following suit throughout the rest of the year. Even with the success of Mario 64, we didn't see a single Mario platforming game until Sunshine's release six years later. Indeed, the Nintendo 64 had a hodgepodge of Mario Party style games, spin-offs, and even an RPG. So in retrospect, yeah, it is a little bit odd that the mascot of Nintendo didn't exactly have that many independent adventure games. Personally, Mario Sunshine is the second Mario game I've ever played. I missed out on the classics due to having uh, Sega Genesis back in the day, but the moment I got my hands on the N64, Mario 64 was actually one of the first games I played for the system. The first Mario I ever played was Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on the Game Boy Color. I enjoyed it a decent amount, but then I played Mario 64. That's the game that really got me into Mario titles, and I've now played pretty much every other one to this very day. Mario Sunshine follows very closely to what was established back in Mario 64, with a couple minor exceptions. That being the omission of the long jump, backward somersault, and punching and kicking. These omissions were likely caused by the game at the time's new gimmick, which we'll get to in a moment. The story of Sunshine starts out a bit differently. Mario and Peach are on a plane headed on a vacation. Yeah, they're actually taking some time to just chill out. However, upon their arrival, Mario is immediately arrested and sentenced to clean a paint-like goop of which the citizens believe was caused by Mario himself. Well, so much for that. The citizens are known as the Pianas, who are far none the biggest douchebags ever introduced in the series. But they're so cute and colorful, how bad could they be? Well, if you get over their rude demeanor, lack of fair trial policies, and the inability to use their eyes, I mean, they're, they're fine. 
Anyway, the Pianos believe that Mario is responsible for the big mess all over the island because there's actually a doppelganger of him running around causing all the problems. This doppelganger is actually known as Shadow Mario, who is actually Bowser Jr. in disguise. His actions have not only polluted the island, but also caused what this game calls the Shine Sprites to scatter. The Shine Sprites are golden entities formed in the sun's image. They act as guardians of Isle Delfino and are the source of the island's sunshine. Without them, the Pianas are not able to maintain their normal lifestyles and as such, are held very dear to the populace. Mario is then tasked to clean up the island and reclaim the Shine Sprites as he goes. As you would expect, this is actually another scheme of Bowser himself. Mario defeats Bowser as usual and the heroes enjoy their relaxing vacation. The story is something new, but also traditional. Bowser's up to no good and Mario has to stop him. He captures the princess, blah blah blah, same old, same old. I agree, the story is very traditional, but at this point, it just wouldn't be a Mario game without Bowser capturing Peach in there somewhere. I felt that the story was entertaining for the most part, although I do agree that the Pianas are probably the stupidest race of characters ever introduced in the Mario series. They don't exactly give me, the player, a reason to want to help them out. Besides that, I thought the story was good, all things considered. Really, I've noticed more intricacy in the various Mario RPG games. Looking forward to the remake of Bowser's Inside story? Oh hell yeah I am, I love that game. Well, now that we've got the story summarized, let's get into the gameplay. The gameplay is where this game truly shines. <laughs> see what you did there. Uh, what? Uh, oh wait, you, you didn't mean... never mind, continue. Okay? As I was saying, the game puts you in control of Mario from beginning to end, and he controls similarly to how we did in Mario 64. We touched on this earlier, but there were a couple of missions in his control scheme to make room for Flood. He serves as this game's gimmick. He has a wide variety of uses, but the main function is to squirt water to clean up the goop throughout Isle Delfino. Throughout the game, you can unlock two upgrades, and I use that term loosely to help obtain the game's collectibles or beat bosses. The upgrades include the Rocket Nozzle, which allows Mario to shoot himself high up into the air, and the Turbo Nozzle allows Mario to run extremely fast at the cost of steering control. Otherwise, by default, Flood will always have the regular Squirt Nozzle and the Hover Nozzle. The Hovering and Squirt Nozzles do... exactly what you would think they'd do. The additional nozzles are mandatory to beat the game, so you really can't miss them if we're being honest here. They're pretty situational, too. Only one boss requires the rocket nozzle, and none of them require the use of the turbo nozzle. You only need to use these to obtain specific shine sprites or blue coins. Yeah, I'd say situational is a pretty good word for them. And not only are they not frequently used, but you also have to find them in this stage. So if you're unfamiliar with the level design of a certain stage, you could be searching for a while. If additional nozzles were accessible at the touch of a button, I think they'd be a little less situational. Yeah, I mean, you could argue that you probably still wouldn't use the additional features, but there's no denying that Mario's versatility would increase. As for the rest of the game, there's a total of nine areas to explore if you include Corona Mountain and the Hub World. If not, then the game has seven action stages. I mean, each area has stuff to collect, so I don't see why anyone wouldn't include those. But Bigums is correct. Each level has a total of 8 episodes and has 11 Shine Sprites to collect, as well as 30 Blue Coins. In order to advance the plot, you're going to have to collect a minimum of 7 Shine Sprites in each stage. Doing so will allow you to take on the final boss and beat the game normally. But as Nate here said, each level has a total of 11. Two additional secret sprites on top of the 8, and one extra sprite for collecting 100 coins. Collecting the sprites from the regular episodes is easy enough, but the secret ones tend to be a bit of a pain. The 100 coin sprites are straight up a pain in the ass. How so? Well, the thing about it is that not only can you not die, but not every episode has 100 coins in them. Without a guide, there's really no way of knowing which episode will allow you to collect 100 coins. And even if you find it, some levels are more difficult than others and makes collecting the coins more tedious than it needs to be. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. And what's worse is that the blue coins don't function here like they did in Mario 64. In this game, they're currency to buy more Shine Sprites. In the main hub world, there's two raccoon-like creatures that sell you Shine Sprites for every 10 blue coins in your possession. And, you know, doing some simple math here, there's 24 in total that you can purchase, which totals out to about 240 blue coins in the game. Alright, Bigums, get it over with. What? Go ahead, go ahead. Rant about the blue coins, just like everyone else. But I really didn't have a problem with them. Uh, what? What? Well, sure, these things are everywhere, and some are more annoying to collect than others, but it really didn't bother me that much. If I'm being honest here, I think people tend to exaggerate just how annoying the blue coins are. 
but then again, I used a guide to get them. Alright, well is there anything about the game you don't particularly like? Well, the red coins can eat my ass. Yeah, this game has a lot of red coin missions. Some of them require you to collect the coins in a very strict time limit on top of dealing with more advanced platforming. And don't even get me started on this godforsaken pachinko puzzle. This part of the game took me the longest and I couldn't stand it. Wait a minute, why are you using the rocket nozzle? I thought I had to. It wasn't until I got a game over that I realized I could use the hover nozzle to access the stage and thus use the nozzle to get the sprite. Yeah, it's a pretty easy mistake to make. Well, there is one last complaint I have with the game. Which is? That would be- Blapo! It's a, it's a, look at it! It's, it's a Blapo! Would you go away? You're not even part of this collab! It's orange! What the hell was that? Don't ask. As I was saying, Yoshi is another mechanic of the game that I wasn't entirely fond of. Each part of the game requires the use of Yoshi in some type of way. What's so bad about it? Yoshi, in my opinion, controls pretty poorly. He can eat all the bad guys and Mario himself is impervious to damage, but Yoshi himself I find doesn't control as well as he should. He gets a triple jump like Mario and can flutter jump like Luigi. If anything though, Yoshi is completely broken if you know what you're doing. If you want to jump a huge distance, just do a jump spin with Yoshi and you'll be high in the air for like three years before you come back down. Well, yeah, actually he's right. But besides Yoshi and the red coins, I think the gameplay was a vast improvement over Mario 64. The level design is great, the bosses aren't too easy while at the same time not being too hard, and the controls for the most part are good. It's not even that the controls are just good, they're almost too good. The pinpoint accuracy and sensitivity is ridiculous. The way that Mario stops and moves through the air and the ground just all feels very natural. This is without a doubt one of the best controlling Mario games out there. And then Mario Odyssey came out. Graphically, I think this game still holds up very well to this day. The cutscenes get a little pixelated if you're playing in HD, but otherwise the worlds are full of bright and vibrant colors. Each area of the game resembles what you would actually see in an island paradise. So with that, I love this game's art direction. As a guy who's traveled around the world to see other resort islands in real life, I can honestly say that the game nails the atmosphere perfectly. I played this on an emulator for this review, so if you plan to do the same, you may want to consult some forums before starting. Why is that? Well, for some reason, this game likes to think that the goop is still on the ground even though you already cleaned it up. You'll have to tinker with the graphics settings in your dolphin emulator to make sure that the game runs the way it should. What do you think of the graphics? Well, like you said, they're pretty phenomenal. Even playing this game on a GameCube, they still hold up to this day. My favorite part is the water. Like, they really nailed the visuals on that. Not only does it look great, but its reactions to the environment sell the effects so well. Like water takes a minute to dry up, the water physics really feel like they pull you down into the water like it would in real life. It's pretty amazing. In terms of audio, I thought the game did a good job there too. It certainly isn't the best the series has ever seen, but I also never played the Galaxy games. So the only other comparison I can make is Mario 64 and Mario Odyssey. The soundtrack itself is fine, but in my opinion there wasn't as much ambition put into this soundtrack compared to other games that came out after. Keep in mind though, I'm not speaking from experience, just hearsay. I can't really agree with that. I think the music is fantastic. Each piece flows perfectly with the location you're set at. It certainly isn't as poppy and frantic as the other Mario songs are, but it's not supposed to be necessarily. And you can't go wrong with that secret stage music. That is one of the best Mario songs to date. Oh yeah, I love that secret stage music. I think my opinion may just be an unpopular one since I'm more of a Sonic fan than a Mario fan. Even some of the worst Sonic games in existence have great music. But in conclusion, Mario Sunshine, in my opinion, is still a fun game to this day, and I can see why people still consider this to be one of their favorites. It's aged remarkably well, and the graphics still look beautiful. The reward for 100% completion, though, isn't really worth it. But if you want bragging rights, go for it. The game is definitely one of the weakest in regards to completion, but other than that, I like it a lot. Pretty much the same thoughts as you. I remember when people didn't really like this game when it first came out, but honestly it is aged like wine. The older it gets, the better it gets. It's a very different type of Mario game, and I can appreciate Nintendo taking a huge risk with this one. All in all folks, Super Mario Sunshine is an awesome experience, and it's one of many examples that you can successfully experiment with your trademark mascot as long as you pay attention to detail. Sonic Team could certainly learn a lot from Nintendo. Yeah, you're right. So tell me, Nate, 
Is this something you could recommend to the viewers? Well, yeah, of course. If you haven't played it yet, what are you waiting for? I personally recommend you guys pick this game up for yourself. It's really an awesome experience, and like Nate said, if you haven't played it already, then seriously, what the hell are you waiting for? But anyway, GameCube games are extremely expensive, and this one is no exception, so I don't exactly condone piracy, but if you can emulate the game, go for it. And Nate, thanks so much for coming to the show, dude. Yeah, not a problem. I guess this is where I'm supposed to plug myself. Like, look, if you like Nintendo stuff, you'll probably like my channel, okay? That's all I gotta say. Definitely be sure to check out Nathaniel Bandy's channel, guys. The links are down in the description. He's got about a hundred times the subs I do, give or take, so you know he's doing something right. But anyway, I hope you guys will tune in for the next video, but until it comes out, you all have a great night, and take care. Hey folks, I want to give you all a big thanks for watching this video and an even bigger thank you to Nathaniel Bandy for the opportunity given to me by collabing with me. It's been a lot of fun putting together this video and I hope that you guys will stick around and see what I got to offer you in the future. But anyway guys, if you're unfamiliar with Nate's channel, the links are down in the description. You all have a great night and take care.